The following prescribed is transcribed. to welcome tonight's mystery guest coffin operas, the new Misty Crinch. You're, you're bored to death to be here, aren't you? Would you introduce tonight's feature, please? And now Sven Gulli presents... The Jackson Five. The Four Lads. The Three Stooges. With Valentine Janicki. As the world's first rotary engine cauliflower. In, go ahead. Sorry. She was only a TV repairman's daughter, but you ought to see her horizontal hole. Oh, <laughs>
if I sit here, I can't see anything but their backs from where I'm sitting. It's all right. Thank you. That's really a great combo, huh? I'd like to listen, please. Yes, I like it. You mind if I buy you a drink? No, thank you. I'd like to. No, thank you. I don't know how to reach you or anything like I'd like to see you again if it's okay. It's impossible. Hey, wait. Um, just let me talk to you for a little while. I'll just walk along with you. Shouldn't be out alone on a night like this anyway. Would I be safe with you? Yes. Hey, I know that woman upset you. I thought maybe you'd need somebody to talk to. Come on, is this the way? Okay? Here's where I live. <laughs> it's a merry-go-round. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you live inside a wooden horse? No. My apartment is upstairs. It must be pretty noisy living over a merry-go-round. Sometimes. But I love the music. It reminds me of when... Of when you were a kid? Yes. Well, good night. Wait a minute. I don't even know your name. My name's Johnny. I am called Mora. Aren't you going to invite me upstairs for, for a while? I have to go in. Just for a while. Good night, Johnny. Can I see you tomorrow? Please? All right. I'll fix breakfast for you. Okay, what time? Around 11. Okay, I'll be here at 11. Good night. Night.
<laughs> Good morning. Good morning. You opening up the merry-go-round already? Sure am. Sunday's our big day. Those look like beautiful horses. Do you mind if I look at them? Sure, go right ahead, sir. Thank you. Don't cost nothing to look. Them horses are all hand carved. Imported from Bavaria. Most people don't notice how special they are. They're the finest in the country. Morning, Dad. Uh, good morning, Alan. Uh, just showing this young man here what fine horses we got. Oh. Oh, excuse me. Uh, this is my granddaughter, Ellen. Hello. Hello. What's your name, son? Johnny. Johnny Drake. How are you? Dad, have you got the key to the cash box? Oh, yeah. Got him here somewhere. Oh, thank you. I better be getting upstairs. I'll see you around. Hey, uh, beautiful horses. Uh, who are you going to visit? Well, I'm just going to visit a girl named Maura. Maura? Uh-huh. I ain't never seen you around here before. You, uh, just, um, meet her or something? No. No, I've known her for a while. Oh. Well, I'll see you around. Well, so long, son. Okay. Johnny? Good morning. Good morning. Come in. Thank you. How are you? I'm pretty good. Good. Wow. This is quite a place you got here. Thank you. I collect things from the ocean. Yeah, so I see. Can I take your hat? Oh, thank you. Are you hungry? Yeah, I'm starving. Good. Breakfast is ready. I have it on the balcony. Come on. Here's the balcony. Thank you. Oh. Have a great view. Thank you. I love it. Let's make a toast. All right. To you and me, and to the beautiful Pacific. To us, Johnny. I hope you like fish. I found these wonderful fresh mackerel this morning. Oh, I love food from the ocean. Especially lobster and crab and sea urchin. Do you ever eat sea urchin? No, I never have. It's like a wonderful ocean fruit. You scoop them out like a pomegranate. I like to taste one sometime. Oh, they're rare around here, but I think I know where I can get some. Maybe next time? Okay. <laughs> I mean, do you work or what? Yes, I work. In fact, I have to work today. 
On Sunday? What do you do? When I told you my name, hadn't you ever heard it before? No, I don't think so. Well, I work on the amusement pier. I'm an attraction. What, are you a dancer? No. <laughs> they throw baseballs at you. Don't they know, really, don't they? No. <laughs> my job isn't dangerous. I give up. What do you do? I'm a mermaid. You're a what? A mermaid. Half woman, half fish. I don't get it. Oh, it's very simple. I wear an artificial fishtail, and I lie in a tank that looks like it's filled with water. And people pay 25 cents and come and look at me. And that's how I make my living. Don't you ever get tired of it? Sometimes. But it's restful anyway. I told you about myself. What about you? <laughs> me, I'm a member of the U.S. Navy. <laughs> you really want to know? Yes. Well... My mother, uh... My father left my mother and I when I was very young. So I became very close to my mother. And I've always wanted to see the world, and I never had a chance to. I couldn't. And my mother fell ill and died. So I figured the easiest way to get out of Denver, Colorado, was to join the Navy, see the world. But I haven't seen any of it yet. You will. I hope so. <laughs> Where did you ever learn to do something like that? I don't remember. Probably on the island where I was born. There, there. Don't be afraid, little bird. I won't hurt you. Sweet bird, don't be afraid. Singularly again with tonight's very special guest, my, my very dear fiends, the, the Mint Christy Noodles. I'd like to know. <laughs> I know. How are you enjoying your stay here on the program? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Around, yeah. Just hanging around. Yeah. He's got a, that's dumb. How would you guys like to hear a couple of heavy numbers? Sure. Maybe you could use them in your act. Sure. Yeah. I heard your act could use a little spicing right. up. How would you like to hear the Joan Rivers song? The, the Joan, Joan Rivers, Rivers song? song? One of you should ask. Joan Rivers, wider than a mile. Oh. Oh. Okay, how about this one here? How about the Alan Alda song? The Alan Alda song? I know you'd like the Alan Alda song. Alan Alda, flowers gone. Oh, 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 oh. Didn't, didn't like that. Okay, one more. This is a, this is a, big, this is a closer. This is, this is when you come back for an encore. For. Okay, you ready? The Moshe Diane song. Guys, the Moshe Diane song. Yeah. Yeah. Such a quizzical look, you know who he is. The one with the... <laughs> right, okay, the Moshe Diane song. I wonder why you call me Moshe Diane. Hi, Diane. Hi, Diane. Uh, okay, uh, I, I think uh, we've, got a, we've got one for you. You've got you one know, for me. We knew we were coming. We put a special, it's kind of a colorful song. We'd like you to hear it. <laughs> I, I hope so for your sake. Good. Uh, the new, what, whatever they are, the Christian Mints, then do the song, the Mints three. I heard that before. Green, green, 
TV on many a really big show. But as soon as we finish singing this song, our booking agents just gotta go. Yeah. Yeah. Green, green, his hair is green, and his hair. the truth, guys. Uh, the words are great, but the melody will never be a hit. Oh, Lord, I want to go. <laughs> wow, <laughs> I ain't gonna see this. You will. I wonder where Sam is. Who's Sam? He's the owner of the show. My boss, as you say. Hey, aren't you afraid people are gonna see you out here? No, they don't pay any attention to the place until Sam begins to spiel. Oh, yeah? Murdoch? <laughs> I beg your pardon. Oh, I was, I was just thinking, my dear. Yes, I was, uh, I was merely contemplating some important matters in the quiet peace of the uh, summer afternoon. Why are you so late? I'm not late enough to make any difference. Run along now and get ready, will you? Oh, I will, but I want to introduce a friend of mine. This is Johnny Drake, Captain Murdoch. How do you do? How are you? <laughs> Hurry along now. I'll be warming up the after fire. All right. I'm going to put my costume on. I'll call you when I'm ready. Hey, you're not going to be long, are no. you? No. Okay. <laughs> sure is a hot day today, isn't it? Yes, yes, it is. Quiet. <laughs> that right over there must really shake you up. You ever tried it? No. Looking at it all day is enough for me. <laughs> Tell me, young man. You've been sailing the seas for how long? Oh, not long at all. I've only gone as far as the Hawaiian Islands. I'm stationed down in Pedro. Oh, that's a pity. That's a pity. I thought we might reminisce. You know, compare notes as one seaman to another. You know I'm retired from His Majesty's service. Oh, you mean the English Navy? Precisely, precisely, the English Navy. Later on, I became captain of my own ship. That's how I found her on one of my voyages. You mean more? Yes, well, perhaps she's told you all about. No, she hasn't. She told me uh, something about coming from an island. You know, you might be interested in that story. It's a very unusual one. Now, why don't you come and visit me sometime? Well, listen, maybe I can come down uh, some weekend when I have liberty. Yes, yes, in no hurry, no hurry at all. But I tell you what, I'll give you my card. I live in Venice. It's not as grand as its Italian namesake, but it has a certain charm, nevertheless. <laughs> Captain Samuel Murdoch. Yes. Are you ready, Johnny? Oh, uh, well, I, I'll see you around. Yes, yes, goodbye. Bye. Aura, ladies and gentlemen, aura the mermaid, the strangest creature in captivity. See her alive. See her living underwater, half woman, half fish. The strangest creature in captivity for 25 cents, ladies and gentlemen. One quarter of a dollar. The thrill of your life. Only 25 cents. More of the mermaid. Los Angeles, now arriving, gate one. 
Santa Monica station. I'll go a little later. You get cramps if you go in now. Uh, I've never believed that. It's true, though. It's very, very dangerous to go in the water right after you've eaten. Maybe. <sighs> hey, Mar, what's with this Sam character? Sam? Yeah. Nothing. What do you mean? I mean, uh, what's his story? Who is he? You've been thinking about him, haven't you? Yeah, sort of. Sort of a funny old guy. He's just a lonely old man. Do you know him very well? Quite well. He's my employer. Sometimes I think my only friend. He's your only friend? What about me? Of course you. You don't know me very well. Maybe after you get to know me. I think I know you pretty well. On our third meeting? No. But I'd like you to know me better. I'm not afraid of that. Why should you be afraid? Me. Did Sam say anything to you about me? He said that he found you on some island. Yes, he did. He found me as an orphan on the island of Mykonos. I was just a child and he adopted me. You mean he's your... Uh... My guardian. He's been like a father to me. I owe him everything. I'm sorry, I didn't even realize. I, I, if I said anything unkind about him, I'm sorry. That's all right. I know that he's a strange man. But he's been so good to me, and I'm grateful. And I know you can understand that because of what you told me about your mother. Would you like some more coffee? I love some. Don't you? Yes. The sun. And the moon and the stars. And the sea. Yes, the sea. I guess I love the sea most of all. But I'm afraid of it too. I guess we're all a little afraid of what we love. Hey, Moore. Yes? You're awfully far away.
stay there for a minute. It's all right. You okay? Yes. Could you get back a little? You okay? Yes. It was that woman, wasn't it? Huh? What woman? Thank you, dear. Hi. Hi, how are you? Thank you, my dear. We were just having some tea. Do you want some? Well, I was just going out for some coffee. Oh, you can have that here. I just said tea, but I meant coffee. Madame Amanovich here is the only one who drinks tea. And how are you, lad? Hi there, how are you? Pretty fine, pretty fine. That's good. Sit down, young man. What a dreadful invention these tea bags are. If everyone insisted on using tea bags, I'd never be able to read anyone's tea leaves. Isn't that so, young man? Yeah, I guess so. Of course, for myself, it doesn't really matter. I can't read my own anyway. Fortune tellers never can, you know. They can see for everybody else, but not for themselves. It's quite frustrating at times. Must be. Coffee. Thank you. How long have you been in the Navy? Just a little over a year. What part of the country are you from? I'm from Denver, Colorado. Now, this is my first time out on the coast. Oh, then you are a visitor in our midst. Yeah, I guess you could call me that. I like it out here. When I get out of the Navy, I'd like to locate out here. Hello, folks. Oh, hello. Dad, it's Lieutenant Henderson. Oh, how are you, Lieutenant? Fine. Would you like a cup of coffee? No, thank you. I can't. You haven't seen anything new or unusual, have you? No, I haven't. Have you, Dad? No. How's things with you, Lieutenant? You come across any new clues? Maybe. We're not quite sure about it yet, though. There's not very much to go on. It's nice to know you ain't just given up. Well, I'd better be on my way. See you all again soon. Well, bye, Lieutenant. Bye. What was that all about? Uh, that was Lieutenant Henderson of the Venice Police. He was asking us about Mora. Maura, what about her? You're a stranger here, and I guess you don't know what everybody here is. Ellen, dear, you're meddling. But I think you ought to know. I think somebody ought to tell him. Don't you, Dad? Why, sure. Certainly ain't no secret. In the past two years, Maura's had two boyfriends, and they're both dead now. Well, do the police think that had something to do with her? Nothing's been proved. No, not yet. But don't you think the fact that it's happened twice is enough? They were both nice boys. They went around with her. Then suddenly, they disappear. A few days later, their bodies are found. Washed up on shore. Drowned. Nevertheless, my dear, there wasn't a shred of evidence that it wasn't simply a most unfortunate coincidence. The police haven't been able to make a single arrest. I know, but if she didn't cause their death, then she brings bad luck, and that's almost as bad. I bet she didn't tell you about those boys, did she? Hello, merry-go-round. Oh, we want to ride the merry-go-round. Okay, I'll be right back. Uh, just hold the line, around. Hey, sailor, it's for you. That's funny, because nobody knows I'm here. Something's come up. I'm going to have to go. Thank you for the coffee. Just a minute, young man. Do drop by and see me. The cards will tell you a good 
Did you ever graduate from college? I certainly did. I'll have you know, I've got degrees from UCLA, MIT, and DDS. DDS? What's DDS? Ding Dong School. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, anyway, enough of this levity. It's time again for Svengoli Street to jam more unwanted information into your little brain. Today, an advanced lesson, cool it. (laughs) <laughs> in compound war. First of all, I'm going to show you how to make two words form one word. Huh? Yes. Let's start with this. The word hand. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. I like that word. <laughs> now, add one more word. This is the other word there. And we'll add this and we have one word left. For example, who knows what compound word is? This is, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it? Ten pig. Ten pig. Ten pig. Pig pen. Hang on to that and have it deep fried. Or, let's take this word. The word is simply ball. We add one more word. There it is. Listen. Right? And we got the word spitball. You get it? Yeah. And finally, here, we take this common everyday word, the word candle, right? And we add this other common everyday word, spaghetti. And who knows what we've got, huh? We've got the word Roman candle. Slendulis Street was made possible by a grant from the anti-air pollution campaign. We'll invite you to look in the sky tomorrow for their skywriting messages. It'll be all that smoke up in the sky.
a jolly surprise. Come in, come in, come in. Well, you finally decided you ought to leave with a visit. Yes, yes, we were talking about my ward, weren't we? Well, uh, what I have to say is rather difficult to explain, particularly to young people, you know. I feel that young people nowadays form their opinions about life too soon. One shouldn't do that. But then perhaps you're different. What were you going to tell me about more? Oh, my dear, 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 dear. Maybe you aren't different. Patience, young man. Patience is a virtue. You should learn that. But, uh... No, actually, uh, what I want to tell you is difficult to put into words. Certainly into words that you would understand. However, I can put the basic fact quite bluntly. You are in grave and serious danger as long as you continue to see Mora. I'm in danger from you? No, certainly not. Then what are you talking about? Mora, my friend, Mora. <laughs> you must be crazy. On the contrary, I'm quite sane. And Mora is quite dangerous to you. In what way? Well, uh, shall we say that she, uh, that she suffers from a certain compulsion which might cause her to take your life. You're trying to tell me that she's insane? Not precisely, but it might be better if you thought she were. Oh, I wish you'd take my word for it and break off this, this acquaintance before it's too late. You're a nice young fellow. I wouldn't like to see you get hurt. I wonder if you'd be good enough to get another bottle of this splendid liquid from the cabinet over there, would you? While well, you're there, you might turn on the light. It seems to be getting a bit dark. souvenir. The hand of a thief. The Mohammedans punish their thieves by removing the offending portions of the body. Rather gruesome, but uh, logical, don't you think? How did you ever get that? I don't you get from the Sultan of Marrakesh. He knew that I collected odd things, so uh, he sent it to me. Rather thoughtful of him. Yeah. That's very interesting. Have another? You hit that stuff pretty hard, huh? Well, it may seem that way to your young eyes, but at my age, one needs a little stimulant. You'll find that out later on. You were going to tell me some more about Mora. Oh, yes, yes. So I was, so I was. Uh, you've, you've read the Greek myths, haven't you? No, no, I haven't. You certainly know the legend of the sirens who in ancient days used to lure seafaring men to their destruction. Yeah, I've sort of heard of them. Well, the sirens were a strange race of sea people, half human, half creatures of the sea. The female of the species were uh, known popularly as mermaids. That means women of the sea. It's like that, uh, that act you and Moore put on. Exactly. But that's a fake, isn't it? A sideshow illusion. You wouldn't believe that they actually exist, would you? No. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Well, let me tell you, young man, that things happen in this world never dreamt of in your philosophy. Where do you think myths come from? Do you think they're just made up? No, they spring from truth. Ancient truth. Living truth. Uh... What does this have to do with Mora? She was a sweet little thing. She lived here with me. Up there. That was her room. Behind that door. I found her. I found her on an island. I didn't know then what she was to become. I've become? I didn't know then that she belonged to that ancient race. She's a monster. 
and you don't stop seeing her. Uh, I want you. That's all I can do. Look, just tell me one thing. Cap Captain Murdoch, there's a woman that's been bothering Maura. Now, I think she's here. I just want to talk to her, that's all. Woman? There isn't any woman. I'm all alone. Captain Murdoch. Captain Murdoch? Sir. I didn't want you to know. It was right of him to tell you, but I didn't want you to know. Now I suppose I, I won't see you anymore? Well, you don't think I believed him, do you? But it's true, Johnny. They are waiting for me to join them. You've seen one of them. Do you mean that woman? You saw how she looked at me. How she spoke to me. She's one of them. She's one of the sea people, and she's here to remind me of the time that I must go to them in the sea. But you don't even know what it is. Then you mean that everything Sam told me is the truth? Almost everything. And will you just tell me how you know? Because I feel the sea water in my veins. Because I listen to the roar of the sea and it speaks to me like a mother's voice. The tide pulls at my heart. The face of the moon fills my soul with a strange longing. More. I don't understand. I'm 
forgive me? I haven't listened to one of these since I was a kid. My grandmother used to have one of these on her dresser. It does sound like the ocean, doesn't it? When I made the voyage to this country from Greece, I carried such a shell with me over the land. In that way, I kept the sea always with me, always close. I'm so afraid. So don't be afraid. Look, look, I don't know what this is all about, you see. I don't know what it's all about. But I know that I'm here and that we'll work this out. Me? Okay. my telling you, but I will you to come here. I really did, and I'm so happy that it worked. Oh, really? I know you have a problem, a very serious problem, and I'm going to try and help you. Thank you, I'd appreciate that. After the reading. After the reading is time enough to thank me. Uh, how much does a reading cost? We'll try to two dollars. You can afford that, can't you? Oh, sure, that's fine. Have you ever had a tower reading before? No, I've never been to a fortune teller before. Don't use that expression, fortune teller. It's so vulgar. I prefer to be known as a chiromancer or clairvoyant. Now, first we must find the card that represents you. If you've never had a tarot reading before, you've probably never seen cards that look like these. No, I haven't. Our modern deck of playing cards is based on these. But most of the symbolical cards have been left out. Here you are, the Knight of Cups. Why is that me? Because this card represents a fair young man, innocent and searching. Take a good look at these cards, young man. They contain all the secrets of the universe. How can a deck of cards contain all the secrets of the universe? Each card is a symbol. Linked together properly, the total of all these symbols contains the total of man's knowledge. Yeah, it's like uh, putting a message into a code. Exactly. Now, this is what crosses you. This is what crowds you. This is what is beneath you. This is what is behind you. What is before you. This is you, your house, your hopes and fears, and this is your future. What do you see? How strange. What? There are certain lunar aspects suggested here. The moon card represents the journey into the unknown. The dog and the wolf, the fears of the mind, the deep primitive instincts in all of us. You see, the crab is attempting to climb out of the water onto the land, but it almost always sinks back again. What does that mean? Don't be impatient. I don't like to make a mistake. A mistake in this profession can be disastrous. You see, the lunar card is most unhappily placed next to the card known as the hanged man. What does the hanged man mean? Ah. Oh. This is a card of profound significance. The figure shows 
life in suspension. It has often falsely been called a card of martyrdom, but martyrdom involves suffering. And if you will look closely at the face of the figure, you will see that it expresses deep entrancement. This card shows that a great awakening is possible and reminds one but after the sacred mystery of death, there is the glorious mystery of resurrection. Well, uh, is that good or bad? My dear boy, the cards don't lend themselves to oversimplification. Well, what about Mora? I'm afraid she's caught in a vortex of evil. And you, it saddens me to tell you, but you are in danger, grave danger. What kind of danger? Now, that is a question you do not need to ask me. The answer lies already in your heart. Before we go back to more of tonight's floppo flick, yeah, we gotta go back, here's old greedy himself with another commercial message. Home breakers, are you tired of your present carpeting? <laughs> Is the decency committee forcing you to cover up your naked floorboards? That's ah. right, Swangoli. Well, now, ST the Enterprises comes to the rescue of harried housewives with our latest shyster schlock vest, Swangoli's carpet cavalcade. Ah. What do you think? Yes. Now, you can own this far-out carpeting with a slightly overcharged sales tax. Now, this carpet. Wait a minute. Tell me about that sales tax. I'm sorry. I'm talking about the carpeting now. But I want to take up the tax first. Well, actually, you got to take up the tax before you can take up the carpet. <laughs> Tom, okay. Only today, ladies and gentlemen, this genuine imitation mohair carpeting for any 9 by 12 inch room in your home can be yours. I mean yours with no charge for installation. That's right, there is no cover charge. Yes? That's right, Swangoli. Yes, our expert installers who've been called on the carpet for many years will cover every room in your ho uh, hovel with this fine high pile carpet. Look How at this. high is that pile? Well, we'll pile it as high as we can, buddy. I'll it's tell you. getting pretty deep in here now. Never mind, you need no cash either. You pay on our exclusive Svenguli installment payment plan. And what does that mean? That means we don't install it until after the payment. That's <laughs> what that means. Remember, these carpets are made of the very latest Miracle Fiber blend. 20% straw, 20% hemp, 20% flax, 10% poly, and 10% ester. What? You never heard of polyester, huh? <laughs> and finally, of course, 25% liquid corn oil and 5% mohair, which, as anybody knows, is the hair of a mo. <laughs> so, send your measurements. <laughs> yeah. And those of the rooms you want carpeted to this address, please. Here's the address to which to send it. It's simply Charlie Ruggles, 222 Overprice Avenue, Rug Pad, Rhode Island. Send today, and you'll receive a free throw rug. Yes, cover up. Give me the free throw rug, would you? <laughs> cover up today with Svengoli's Carpet Cavalcade, another undercover undertaking of STD Enterprises. STD, sham, trickery, and deep shags. <laughs> I wouldn't put much stock in what a fortune teller says. I don't. It's just when you keep hearing things over and over again, and you start believing it after a while. You said some things about Mora. What do you really know about her? Oh, I've been sorry about what I said the other afternoon. Well, it was really none of my business. I was just telling you what I'd read in the newspapers, because I thought you ought to know. I just... I can't believe that... Are you in love with her? Yes. It's a funny thing about love. Um, it can happen very suddenly, you know what I mean? Like, 
when you're lonely, or when you've been looking for someone. I don't know what to do for more. See, she believes it, too. Believes what? That she killed those boys? No, no, no. I... I can't explain. Well, try not to worry about it. Why, maybe things will turn out better than you think. Want some more coffee? I'm gonna go for a walk. Get some time to kill before uh, Mara gets home. Is she, uh, working? Yeah. Well, Ellen, it is Ellen, isn't it? Uh-huh. I didn't think you'd remember. Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for listening to me. It's sort of hard sometimes when you don't have anybody to talk things over with. I know. Maybe you'll come around again soon, huh? Yeah. Okay. I'll see you later. Okay. Bye, Johnny. Good day today? I sure did. There were lots of people on the pier. That's good. I was sort of tired. Why don't you lie down for a while? Yeah, I think I will. More?
You go have a massage. Okay. I don't want to leave you alone, though. I'll be all right. It's morning now. I'm sure you'll be all right? Mm-hmm. Where's the bathhouse? It's down at the end of the pier. Will you get some rest while I'm gone? Mm-hmm. That's all, I guess. Uh, we put you in good shape. <sighs> well, fancy seeing you here. What a delightful surprise. Mm -hmm. Hi. And how are you today, Bruno? Oh, Captain, you want me to pound you later? No, I might like you to forego a pleasure like that. By the way, Johnny, I hope you haven't forgotten the conversation we had the other day. I've been really worried about you, you know. Really? Yes, really. Tell me something. Has, uh, has Maura been acting a little odd recently? Hmm? No. Sure, now. You're telling me the truth? Well, it doesn't matter. It's just that I want to give you a bit of advice. You must be especially careful now at the time of the full moon. Because that's when the tides pull the strongest. As I said, uh, a word to the wise. What are you trying to... Johnny, I've been thinking about last night. Well, I've decided that I must have been walking in my sleep. But I don't want to talk about it. I'm going to forget it. Do you know that's the best thing I've heard you say? We'll just forget about it, all right? That's yes. what I've been trying to get you to do, you know. I know. All right, we'll forget about it. All right. <laughs> And so what are you doing? Cleaning the diving equipment. I was looking at the calendar and I noticed that the moon was full. And I realized that the tides will be just perfect at a certain place I know. And I thought we could go diving there this afternoon. I don't think it's a very good idea. Why? It's too cold. The water is warm. I just don't think it's a good idea. I think you should rest. I don't want to rest, Johnny. I feel fine. You're here such a short time on the weekends, and I have the whole week to rest when you go. Please go with me. All right. Where do you want to go, Dad? 
are you? It's not far from here. You'll see. How do you know where we are? Because I've been here before. It must be awfully deep here. It is. What's the point of diving here? There are reefs under here. You'll see. Johnny? What? Stay close to me. We mustn't become separated. Minstrels. And I thought they were the Brady Bunch. No, we're the new Christy Minstrels. And we're here to remind you, you're watching Sven Gulli. They knew it wasn't Captain Kangaroo, dummies. In a moment, back to our movie. But first, do you have any idea how tough it is to talk in unison like this? No, how tough is it? Funny you should ask. It's very difficult for seven people to enunciate their words so that their individual speech patterns can be clearly understood and they can take the picture all worldwide. Are you sure you're not the Brady Bunch? <laughs> Stop. Check that out. Well, Brady! <laughs>
Room service for your papers. Just leave them outside. eventually. The murderer always returns to the scene of his crime. Oh, I know this isn't the exact spot where the deed occurred, but you had to see her, didn't you? You had to see the result of your monstrous act. But I loved her. You loved her. What do you know about love? I've loved her ever since she was a child. No, you did it and you must pay for it. How did you find her? God wanted me to find her. She was such a sweet, good child. Oh, I... Oh, I... I thought the shooting gallery was closed tonight. It is. It sounded like it came from over there. Sit down. 
This is somewhat irregular, but Captain Murdoch here has agreed to give us a statement, and he asks that you be present. You can go ahead now, Captain Murdoch. To begin with, I want you to know that no matter what I've done, how wicked or unreasonable it may seem, it was done for love of Maura. I've loved her ever since I found her. She was a pathetic little thing in that Greek island village, abandoned there to almost certain starvation if I hadn't taken her into my home. But of course I realized that like all children, she would eventually grow up and leave that home. That preyed on my mind constantly. I, I couldn't face the thought of her leaving me. So I decided to plan some way to keep her with me always. The best way seemed to make her entirely dependent on my love. In order to do this, I, I told her the legend of the sea people. Slowly, I put into her young and pliable mind the idea that she was one of them, that someday she must rejoin them, and that she couldn't expect to have normal relations with ordinary people. But I never counted on the enormous power of her own independent will. Eventually, my love wasn't enough for her. She had to have another kind of love. When she began those relationships, I decided the only thing to do was to cut them off at their source. So I killed those two young men. And I tried to persuade her in some way that she had done it, under some strange influence from the sea people. And to a certain extent, I succeeded. I managed to cast a lot of fear and doubt into her mind. But she still demanded her freedom. She left my home, she took an apartment, and then she met Johnny. And he's told you the story, then you know the rest. So my experiment in psychology failed. Or perhaps it succeeded too well. She couldn't face a recurrence of what had gone before. So rather than destroy the person she loved, she decided to embrace the rapture of the depths. That's what happened. Isn't it? Yes. You loved her, didn't you? Then perhaps you can understand. Just a little. I do understand. Captain Murdoch, there's one thing I've been wondering about. Johnny told me about a woman who frightened Maura. She was supposed to be one of these sea people. I assume she was part of your plan. Woman, I don't know what you mean. You know, the one that I followed to your house that day. Remember? I vaguely think you mentioned something about that before, but there wasn't any woman. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I've told you everything. May I go? Guard? I saw that woman with my own eyes. This wasn't just something out of Moore's imagination. It's almost as... It's almost as if there was some truth to what she said. I think it's more likely that Captain Murdoch is merely trying to protect the woman. I suppose so. Yes? The shore patrol men are here to pick up Drake, sir. He'll be right out. Well, good luck, my boy. Just down the hall there. You were here, so I came down to see if there was anything I could do for you. Thank you. I'm sorry about Maura.
Ah, hello there, everybody in Darwin. Here we are again, baby, huh? Listen, Swingle, the one thing I've often wondered. How come you're always wearing those dumb glasses? Why don't you ever take them off? Are you ashamed of what you look like without them? Why, of course I'm not ashamed, Darwin. Here, I'll take them off and you'll see. I look pretty big. Jim, the abominable snowman. I tell you there's someone coming. I can't see a thing. Who is it? Who is it? No, no. Uh, uh, no! Ah! Gerald! No. Right, take strength. Pull it quick. Stand by. Now, together. He's just below the lip. Here he is, Jim. No! Come on, come on! You idiot, we nearly had him. Why did you let him go? Didn't you see What him? are you talking about? His head! talking in your sleep. I give away any secrets? Not really. I didn't quite catch his last name. <laughs> Would you like some tea? 
Oh, thank you. You sure feel all right. Yeah, I feel wonderful. I wish everybody would stop treating me like an invalid. I'm sorry. Look, Anne, there's a mountain. Don't worry, it's all right. Is there anything I can do? Oh, uh, my name is Alan Brooks. Oh, well, I'm Anne Pilgrim. This is my sister, Sarah. Hello. How do you do? Uh, there we are. Sorry about your newspaper, Mr. Oh, that's all right. I've read the baseball scores. There you are. Spot of that'll bring the color back. You look like you might do with one. Okay. You have far to go? Geneva. It's quite a run. Trollenberg. Next, Trollenberg. Trollenberg? Sarah, we're getting off at Trollenberg. My stop. Oh, what's the matter, and You know we have to go on to Geneva. No, I really can't go any further today. We can stop at the Hotel Europa. Hotel Europa? We've never been to this place. How do you know about the Hotel Europa? I don't know. Anne, what's got into you? We're getting off at Trollenberg. Please, Sarah. Did you have a nice trip, Herr Brooks? Herr Klein, nice to see you again. Oh, I'd like for you to meet uh, Miss Anne and Sarah Pilgrim. Herr no, Klein, it. he's a proprietor of the Hotel no. Europa. I wonder if maybe you could help us out. These uh, young ladies have arrived without any reservations. Thought perhaps you could put them up. Yes, sir. Yes, it will be all right. Good. Thank you very much. But the car's outside. Very good of you to put us up at such short notice. Well, uh, this is not yet our season, you understand? Oh, I thought now would have been about your busiest time. Well, normally, yes, but, uh... Oh, is... Is, uh, is Hans still working for you? Yes, uh, Hans is still working for us, Thank Good. you. Cigarette, sir? No, thank you. And? Hmm? No, thank you. How about you, Herr Klein? Thank you, I don't smoke. They shouldn't have started to climb. What are you talking about? An accident. Last week, 1,200 feet up the South Col. Three English students, one of them was killed. Was there an accident, Mr. Klein? On a mountain, uh, these things sometimes happen. What else do you know about the Trollenberg? Peasants are leaving the mountain. They say it's bad luck. The mountain people up there are simple. They are superstitious. All these stories are nonsense. What story? Climbers disappearing into the mist and never seen again. Mr. Brooks. Klein told us you were coming. My name's Truscott, Philip Truscott. How are you, Mr. Truscott? Klein, you didn't tell us we were expecting other guests. Oh, this is Miss Sarah Pilgrim and Miss Anne Pilgrim. 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 Sarah and Anne Pilgrim. So we've met before. The name rings a bell. Does it? 
Would you mind if we went up to our rooms now? Observatory at the foot of the mountain. The cable car. There's the small hut the climbers use. You can see it from the observatory. It's all there. Just like. Just like what, Anne? Well, just like. Sarah, why did I want to come here? What is there about this place? Why do I feel I've seen it all before? Don't worry about it, darling. Lots of people get a feeling like that. Perhaps you read about it in a book, or saw a picture in a travel folder. You mustn't let it upset you. No, I mustn't. Yes, you're right. I've probably read about it. Come in. Hi. How are you? Give your hand. Oh, I think I can manage. Lovely spot, this, isn't it? Certainly is. You've been here before, haven't you? Yes, once, a couple of years ago. Good climbing. So they tell me. Don't you climb? Not if I can help it. Funny place to come for holiday. If you don't climb. Yes, isn't it? <laughs> Taxi, those two girls, aren't they? Certainly are. Your grandsisters. Sarah and Anne. Of course, I knew I'd seen them before somewhere. And on the Palladium about a month ago. They're a mind reading act. <laughs> Funny they didn't say anything. Well, perhaps they, uh, they wanted some privacy. Can I buy you a drink later? All right. Good. Give me Zurich 6468, will you? Yes, I, I want you to check on someone for me. Brooks. Alan Brooks. He just arrived here. He he's American. He's about 40, I should think. Well, I should try New York first, and then Los Angeles, and then Washington. OK. Right. Hello there. You'll be Brooks. That's right. I'm Dewhurst. This is Brett. How do you do? How do you do? Looks like you're going for a climb. Yes, we're going up the Trollenberg. Can I have a noggin before we start? Care to join us? All right. What's it going to be? Scotch, please. Scotch and the crew brandy. Better give me a bottle of brandy to take with us. Keep the cold out tonight. You, uh, you going to stay tonight? No, there's a hut at the foot of the South Col. We'll sleep there tonight and attack the mountain proper tomorrow. Hello, Truscott. You must be Miss Pilgrim. Yes, that's right. Oh, uh, this is Mr. Durst, sir. And Mr. Brett. Brett, yes. How do you do? Do you care for a drink? I appear to be in the chair. Wish us bon voyage. Thank you. I'll have a Campari. Truscott? Uh, scotch, please. Campari and another scotch, Hans, please. Good no, sir. Her sister's here with you, isn't she? Klein told us. Yes. Would she care to join us? Perhaps oh, we could... No, she's having a rest just now. Quite an occasion for me. My first time up a mountain. Oh, yours too, Mr. Brad? Oh, no. He's a big noise in the Alpine Club. How did you come to take up mountaineering? I want to see if we can't find some good reason for all these accidents. I'm a geologist. I know all about rock formation and that sort of thing. Well, here we are. Cheers. Good luck. To a good climb. Keep an eye on your roping, won't you? Why roping, particularly? Student business last week. That's right. Nasty business. Very nasty. What was that? Some kids climbing on the South Col, and one of them fell. They shouldn't have been climbing without a guide. Seems he wasn't roped up correctly, and the rope got caught up around his neck. Strangling? Worse than that tore his head off. He 
you've been to the half of it. Tell them what the villagers say, huh? It's not for me to... What do they say, Hans? Well, the guides who found him, also his friends. They swear the rope was round his waist. You understand, it was still tied. Oh, but how could it have... Uh... The villagers have something to say about that, too. Haven't they, Hans? What do the villagers say, Tresk? They say that it happened before he fell. As I said, they shouldn't allow inexperienced climbers up the Trollenberg without a guide. There are bound to be accidents. Nevertheless, you watch your ruby. We ought to be moving. You want to make the hut before nightfall? Well, yes. Oh, uh, I'm going up to the observatory. I'll hitch a ride within the cable car. That is, unless you're going to climb the whole way. Climb the whole way? Well, if I can help it. <laughs> that a certain chemical change that can take place inside rock which cause a physical alteration to its structure. At times, it can become like chalk, break away in your hand. What do you think of that, Brad? Hmm? Oh, I don't think it's like that. A mountain's a mountain. Some people can climb it and some can't. Those that can't shouldn't try. I'm here under sufferance. <laughs> How long do you think it'll take you to reach the hut from the observatory? I don't know. Oh, about three and a half hours. It's an easy climb. Get out of here! <laughs> Anybody? Tell me. Great. Good. <laughs> well, Professor. Professor, how many more times do I tell you I am not to be interrupted? I'm sorry, sir, but there's someone outside to see you. I don't care. Tell him to go away. He says his name is Brooks. Tell him to. Ellen Brooks? Yes, sir. Well, bring him in, bring him in. No, wait, wait. I bring him in myself. <laughs> Alan, my dear Alan. <laughs> they all get a sack for leaving you out here. Come in, come in. Oh, it's good of you to come and see me. And on your holidays, too. I was lucky I was in Europe. Huh? You got my letter? Yes. Well, you don't say very much. What's the matter? You're not pleased to see your old friend? The gate, sir, Professor. And how are you, Alan? <laughs> come in, come in. <laughs> well, Alan, what do you think of our little observatory, huh? Yes, indeed. You know, the government gives me as much money as I want. <laughs> uh, come here. I'll show you something. Television? Better than windows. So look. See? Television cameras on the roof. We watch everywhere. <laughs> you know, the government, the government, they say to me, Professor, do you have to have such expensive things? Windows are much cheaper. <laughs> and I say, I have to have, and I have. <laughs> uh, that over there, that is the only window. And even for that, we have protection. Look. That will stand up to any avalanche. <laughs> uh. 
but that too was very expensive. <laughs> All this to study cosmic rays. Well, Alan, come into my office, huh? Well, Alan, here we are. <coughs> Same old mess, huh? <laughs> well, you're looking very fit. Fit? I look the same as always. Come on, quit your stalling, Professor. You forget I know you. You said in your letter that it was urgent. I see you right away. What's so urgent? Well, how long have you been here in Trollenberg, huh? Got here this morning. Came right up to see you. You haven't heard about the accidents, then? Yes, I, I heard about the students. Yeah, that was one of them. But, but there have been others. Many others. Where people climb mountains, there are lots of accidents. That's true. And sometimes the bodies, they disappear. But here, the search parties go out and always they find nothing. Now, why is that? I don't know. And then there is the cloud. What cloud? Come on, Alan, you know what I'm talking about. The cloud where there should be no cloud. Where there are mountains, there are always clouds. But this one remains static. On the side of the Trollenberg, it never moves. Freak of nature. A radioactive freak of nature? Radioactive? Mm -hmm. Do we see it from here? Come, I'll show you. There you are, on the south side of the Trollenberg. Come here. Now you see, here, here's a map of the area. This is the Trollenberg. Now that, that is the scan. It's up on the roof here. Now you see at the moment, nothing. No reaction, nothing. Now remember, here is the cloud. I turn on the scanner. So, now watch when it passes the cloud. Watch up here on the dials. Uh-huh. Now you see it's past the cloud, nothing. Watch it go around again. Watch here. Well, what do you think of that? Now, Alan, I ask you to think back three years ago to what happened in the Andes. But, but this can't be the same. Why not? We have the accidents like before, we have the cloud like before. Why can't it be the same? Too many things missing. The, the mental compulsion. What is it? Wrong train. She, she suddenly decided she had to get off at Trollenberg. She was booked for Geneva. But she had to get off at Trollenberg. And did she? Yes. She's at the hotel. There's climbers on the Trollenberg, sir. Climbers? I thought they were all scared away. Where are they? 16 degrees west of due north. Two thousand meters. Brett and Dewhurst. You know them? Well, just from the hotel. They came up with me on the cable car. Mm. Well, they should be all right as long as they stick to the present track. The cloud is well to the west of the path. Mm. Aaron, will you do something about what I've told you? And the cloud? Mm. Do what? Inform the authorities. Look, I'm on a holiday. Besides, you haven't told me anything that can be proved. I've told you about the cloud. I've told you about the accidents. What more do you want? Facts, proof. Something that'll look real in black and white on the committee's desk. I don't know. I'm not going to stick my neck out again like I did in the Andes. But why? You were employed by the United Nations. It was all in the report. Look, by the time the Andes report was in, there wasn't anything left in the area, explained or otherwise. They practically accused me of dreaming the whole thing up. 
Well, if I was to take a hand here, I'd have to have a list of documented facts, and they'd have to be pretty conclusive. You're an important man. Why don't you get through the burn? Important? I'm only important if I say something about cosmic rays. If I say anything else, they tell me to mind my own business. Maybe... Maybe you should speak to Klein. Hotel proprietor? Well, he's also the mayor of Trollenberg. Perhaps he could help. Anyway, he could supply a list of the accidents. Then perhaps you do something yourself. You can't relax like that. Hello? Yes, Everett. You arrived all right. Good. Good. A night's sleep will set you right. Yes, all right. Goodbye. It was her breath. They have arrived at the hut. You see, there's nothing to worry about. It is just unfortunate that this year we have had many inexperienced climbers. And what about the rumors in the village? Well, you know these people, Professor? They are superstitious. They like to believe in, uh, in fairy stories. Gentlemen, you understand. Officially, there's nothing I can do. summit and back tomorrow, if we travel light. I must have a sack for rock samples. Uh, I think we can manage that. You can take your sack. Visibility's mm. not too good. A little clear. Fog, up here. 